um, Vice President, Chinese Vice President Xi Jinping, of course, uh, was in South Africa this week. And we're talking about bilateral agreements. And we know that various uh, agreements were signed this week. We haven't got much detail on it, but we know it's got to do within the energy and, of course, the mining space. Mm -hmm. Well, in, firstly, the, the, this is largely a, a sort of political uh, relationship building exercise. Xi Jinping's follow up visit to South Africa from President Zuma's visit two months ago. This is part of the binational commission between South Africa and China. Every three years, we have these BNC, these binational commission, commission meetings. They're often characterized by political rhetoric. However, I think this visit, as you mentioned, a lot more sort of commercial thrust, focusing on en energy in particular. Mm. Uh, you know, <coughs> just uh, looking forward, because we keep saying that China wants to secure um, energy and wants mm. to re secure resources, and we know that we do export a lot of our minerals to China. Is that then going to be strengthened mm. even further? Mm. Well, I think the, the play from Beijing, at least, is to, is to you can see the, the, the very significant spend in coming years in this country in the energy sector, thermal, uh, renewable, and ultimately nuclear. And certainly, China, this visit is about largely pushing or getting Chinese companies uh, yeah. into this sort of space. So I certainly expect um, you know, Chinese construction firms, perhaps infrastructure development companies, uh, getting involved in our in rollout of our power expansion in this country. Well, I mean, one of the the most recent deals this week that we've heard news of is a deal with Yingli, <coughs> and of course that's a solar deal which amounts to around 435 mm -hmm. million dollars. And they do start, uh, mm -hmm. they do ha hope that they're going to start seeing mm -hmm. uh, this implemented by 2012. So that, of course, mm -hmm. heading towards the renewable energy side mm -hmm. of things. Well, Yingli is a major uh, energy uh, renewable you know, solar panel manufacturing company in China that was sponsor of the FIFA World Cup. In, in 2010. I think this announcement is, is somewhat premature yet. Um, the size of a deal, um, it's obviously significant, but I think a lot, a lot of policy has to be put in place before these commercial transactions can be announced, be it from China or perhaps other countries. Mm. So do you think that basically China's and Africa's relationship at this point in time is about bilateral agreements, it is about synergies and working <coughs> together, or do you think it's really about securing resources? And of course I'm alluding to coal, mm. and we know mm. that uh, China consumes a lot of coal and they of course do imports mm -hmm. a lot of that resource mm -hmm. from the likes of Australia. Well, of course, a major, a major component of a relationship is, is, is extractive industries focused, be it oil and be it solid minerals increasingly. However, it's, uh, I think China's engagement with the continent is far more broad-based and comprehensive than purely resources. We're seeing an investment in manufacturing. There are now seven special economic zones uh, in African countries, Chinese-initiated, negotiated with recipient African government special economic zones. So we're seeing a, a not just a, a resource sort of thrust, but also in industrialization to an extent, light industrial manufacturing, shifting of capacity from China into African economies, and certainly this is a very positive thing. Mm. Well, looking at uh, Chinese uh, energy generation, they basically rely on real two re uh, methods. It's coal-fired power mm. plants mm. and, of course, hydro e energy as well, which, mm. of course, is really what they're focusing on. But at the end of the day, we've also seen a massive energy saving program, <coughs> an electricity saving mm. program, mm. Uh, and news reports tell us that there are starting to be supply constraints as the winter season comes comes to the fore and it seems mm. that they are embarking on diesel fired uh, power mm. generation. Mm. It seems that they're basically experiencing the same problems that we've also got here in South Africa. Well, you can imagine the, 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 uh, the pressures for, for generation, for electrical generation when you're having a 10, 12, 13 percent growth economy and we were having challenges at five, never mind double digit growth. So of course the pressures are, pressures are immense in China. What we're also seeing in China now is a, is a, is a, is a very rapid rollout of renewable energy. Uh, by 2020 the target is 20 percent of China's energy capacity or generation will be contributed by renewable energy. So this is a major play. Secondly, is on the nuclear side. We're seeing rollout of 2G, largely 2G uh, nuclear power facilities in China, which is also sort of starting to, to, to alleviate the power uh, constraints, as you mentioned, leading up to, to that hard uh, energy intensive winter months. So you think that they're mm -hmm. going to try and get away and steer away <coughs> from coal fired power generation? Do you think that's the ultimate? It'll take time. Strategy? Ultimately, yes, but you know, China's growth has 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 come at the expense of its own environment, and they fully understand this from a policy perspective. However, it, it's, it's, you know, it's a very long lead time to roll out nuclear power plants. At the same time, renewable, the technology is not really there yet to generate significant amounts of, of, of electrical power generation through renewables at this stage. So they're doing effectively the three-track process. It's thermal, it's renewable, and it's nuclear all in one. Mm. And what kind of role do you think that China will play in, in, in the South African context? I mean, at the mm. end of the day, we are embarking on building new coal-fired <coughs> power plants. Mm. 
uh, we've really done away with uh, nuclear generation because mm. it's, it's far more costly. Mm. But at the end of the day, if we start seeing synergies between a country that is growing at such a rapid pace and embarking on renewable energy, perhaps mm. there are lessons that can be learned. Well, the lessons are, I mean, going back to first quarter 2008 when the power crunch really hit our economy, it was quite similar to China in 2002-2003 where we were literally having brownouts or blackouts in large parts of the country, even in Shanghai, I recall, being in Shanghai early 2008, and uh, there was power saving. Lights at 10 o'clock were going off on the main sort of, you know, main 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 uh, main urban drags uh, of, of the city. What we're seeing now, however, China's uh, energy shortages were alleviated in 18 months' time. Uh, by 2005, as energy sources had been had been relieved. So what did they do? Because did they of rollout. Pri uh, pricing mechanisms that they also no, it was around in increasing capacity and oh. very very rapidly. So what we will see, I think, in the near future, in the short to medium term, is I think mean, is a fantastic value proposition for for good technology, reasonable cost, rapid rollout of 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 uh, of, of Chinese driven energy infrastructure into this country, mm. be it in thermal, be it renewable, and also obviously well, nuclear. Um, uh, now, post the visit, we don't really have any mm. information with regards to the amount of money that will be invested <coughs> in South Africa, as we mentioned, mm. bilateral agreements uh, signed even further. But mm. what kind of credit facilities do you think the Chinese government could uh, mm. supply to not only South Africa, but we know they're also visiting Angola and Mozambique sure, going sure. forward? This will come from China Development Bank. China Development Bank, traditionally a policy bank in China, becoming more of a commercial bank, but a bank which certainly has strong intent towards our economy and certainly the region. There's talk of a $20 billion dollar credit facility to be provided by China Development Bank for energy infrastructure building here in this country. Mm. And looking at uh, the, the trade uh, that is currently ongoing, we know that it amounts around $5.5 .5 billion mm -hmm. or so. Mm -hmm. uh, do you expect that to increase rapidly? Most certainly. The, the trade, uh, you know, as of first half last year, 2009, uh, China became South Africa's largest trading partner. This trade has been growing upwards of 30 percent per annum, uh, pretty much as it has of the rest of the continent. This is not just, you know, Chinese product being exported into in, into South Africa, but but increasingly, obviously, it's resources from our side. Um, so it's very much of a of, of a very strong yeah. bilateral play, and it will be increasing. Martin, before uh, we say rapidly. goodbye, looking at uh, the labor laws in China and the fact mm. that we are embarking on such <coughs> a symbiotic relationship with mm. the Chinese government, uh, very different to what we see coming through from the unions mm. uh, and looking at the rapid growth that China is experiencing how do you see that playing out in South Africa do you think we could perhaps adopt some of the uh, Chinese strategies well I, I don't think so I think it's a v obviously a very different labor policy environment the, the, the thing is how do you you know uh, what are the um, uh, how do you how do you get such high growth at nine ten percent uh, working 40 hours a week we, we we're in a developing world environment but we have a very first world West European labor regulatory system which one could argue perhaps is not entirely, entirely suited to the conditions in this country.